Whether it was his match against The Undertaker, defeating Kevin Owens for the Universal Championship, or yes, defeating The Fiend in Saudi Arabia, don't even get me stuck. Started. Goldberg has been part of some of the more controversial booking decisions since his return to WWE in 2016. According to the Hall of Famer, though, he was only following whatever creative had suggested. Interestingly enough, that has not always been the case. I'm Rick Uchino here are five WWE storyline ideas that Goldberg allegedly, he word allegedly, rejected. Number five, the master of the jackhammer apparently did not want to face test. Now, Triple H defeated Goldberg, Chris Jericho, Shawn Michaels, Randy Orton, and Kevin Nash in an Elimination Chamber match back at SummerSlam in 2003. Following that match, Triple H repeatedly hit Goldberg with a sledgehammer during a three-on-one attack with Orton and Ric Flair. The next night on Raw, Goldberg was originally booked to defeat Test in a squash match. However, he thought the storyline would make more sense if he did not compete at all and sold the injuries from SummerSlam instead. WWE executive Bruce Pritchard later confirmed that Goldberg quite rightly raised concerns about facing Test that night, leading to the match being canceled. Instead of competing one night after SummerSlam, Goldberg returned to the ring eight nights later on Raw, teaming up with Maven and Shawn Michaels to defeat Randy Orton, Ric Flair, and Triple H. Number four, Goldberg allegedly did not want The Rock to leave him laying in the middle of the ring. Let's go back to March 31st, 2003. It was an episode of Monday Night Night Raw, the debuting Goldberg left The Rock laying in the ring after hitting him with a spear. In another story from Bruce Pritchard's Something to Wrestle With podcast, details emerged about an alternative idea for the WCW legend's introduction to the company. Goldberg was apparently reluctant to return the favor to The Rock on the next episode of Raw, which means he didn't want to be left laying in the ring after a beatdown from the People's Champion. Pritchard added that the decision might have been made by Vince McMahon instead instead of Goldberg, believing that the WWE chairman didn't want someone like Goldberg to be left laying just a week after his debut, as it would have hurt the mystique. Irrespective of whose call it was, Goldberg and The Rock did not end up having a physical altercation on the following week's episode of Raw. Instead, The Rock quickly escaped the ring after telling the WCW legend that he did not want to face him in a match. Number three, known of course for his undefeated streak, Goldberg did not want to end a fellow superstar's undefeated streak. Prior to Joining WWE, Goldberg burst onto the scene as one of WCW's most featured stars in 1997. He put together an undefeated streak, allegedly, of 173 matches before finally losing against Kevin Nash at Starcade in 1998. Three months after his WWE debut, Goldberg ended another Superstars undefeated streak on the June 23rd, 2003 episode of Monday Night Raw. The person he defeated, Rodney Mack. He had won five consecutive white boy challenge matches against white superstars before going one-on-one with Goldberg. And yes, white boy challenge was a thing back then. Mac told Wrestling Inc. in an interview earlier this year that he and Goldberg actually hit it off well, and the WWE Hall of Famer initially did not want to end his undefeated streak. Ultimately, though, he went ahead with the decision and defeated Rodney in a 26-second match. Number two, Goldberg meets Gilberg. In the late 1990s, WWE decided to have a little bit of fun with WCW's megastar Goldberg by creating their own version. Gilberg, played by former WWE enhancement talent Dwayne Gill. He wore the same attire and performed the same moves as Goldberg and had a 445-day reign as the WWE light heavyweight champion. Just last year, Gill said in an interview that he had pitched to Goldberg the idea of a first-time ever clash between the two, but that never came to fruition. Although Goldberg and Gilberg did have have a segment back in 2003, the former world champion was very annoyed with Gil. Apparently, Gil was told backstage that Goldberg wanted to kick his ass for mocking him. In fact, the WWE Hall of Famer also confirmed it by saying that he wanted to cut his head off when he first saw Gilberg on WWE TV. Thankfully, there is no animosity between the two now. And claiming the top spot for good reason, Goldberg's issues with Chris Jericho. It is no secret that Chris Jericho and Goldberg did not get along whatsoever during their time together in WCW and WWE. Their first televised WWE match took place at Bad Blood in 2003, where Goldberg defeated Jericho in 11 minutes. In an episode of Something to Wrestle With, it was discussed that Jericho wanted to kick out of Goldberg's spear. The WWE Hall of Famer allegedly rejected Jericho's request, even though 
he had already allowed The Rock to kick out of the same move. Goldberg reportedly implied to Chris Jericho that he was not at the level of The Rock to kick out of one of his signature moves. Now back in WCW, Jericho wanted to lose against Goldberg in what he believed would have been the greatest squash match of all time. However, as he recalled on Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions earlier this year, Goldberg was never a fan of the idea. The two men also became involved in a real-life backstage fight after Goldberg jumped to WWE in 2003. Jericho got a hold of him in a front face lock before the fight was broken up by Arn Anderson, Booker T, Christian, The Hurricane, and several others. That is our list this time around. Make sure to give us the old thumbs up there. Also, make sure to subscribe to the Sports Keto Wrestling YouTube channel for more content like this, plus exclusive interviews and so much more.